Hi, welcome back to the channel. So uh, today it's Sunday, Sunday evening. I've been checking the sheep today. I took the pasture topper off, put it on the scraper on the 65, and we can't take the cattle out yet. A lot of you guys are asking about the cattle, and it's going to be a while, to be honest, until the uh, until the cows can go out. And it's going to it's going to really affect the silage as well for next year. The, the wet weather, I think now, um, where where some of the marshes have been badly damaged by the uh, by the water. But you'll see in today's video. Um, I had the drone out a couple of weeks ago. You'll see why um, part of the farm is, is really badly flooded towards Great Yarmouth. So it's it's a nightmare. It is what it is. Every year is different. This year has been just a nightmare as well, to, so far weather-wise. Um, th but the only thing which is doing quite well is the spring barley. But you'll see why. And uh, yeah, enjoy your weekend, whatever you're up to. It's actually my uh, my mother's 60th today. So happy birthday, Mum, if, if you're watching. And uh, yeah, no, I'll catch you on the next one. So I've got to go and get ready. We've got a nice dinner and I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, well, hopefully you can hear me on my microphone here. So um, this was filmed a little while ago now. I was, it was the 8th of March and I went out in the Land Rover and I thought, right, we've got to go and check these marshes because the cows are going out before long and we need to see what sort of condition they're in. It was a really difficult flight because it was really windy and actually started raining on the way home with this flight, but we managed to do it. So I drove all the way down there. We've got to fly actually over a river to reach the marshes. Now the ones we're gonna see on this flight are actually grazing marshes. A little bit further on, about a mile further on is the silage marshes, which is where we make the silage. You can see those bales there. They're not actually our bales, that's our neighbor who, um, who made those bales in autumn and then they, they couldn't then I guess get the bales off. So yeah, they, they sort of made the bales at the wrong time really in autumn. But anyway, we're trying to fly now against the wind towards the silage marsh. So we're gonna quickly look back on ourselves to get our bearing. That's the Land Rover. And there goes the train, for anyone who knows Great Yarmouth, that's the Haddisco train, which goes over Had uh, Haddisco Dam. And then there's a couple of towers you'll see on the left, which I always call them the Twin Towers. So we're trying to basically fly to, to get to where the marshes are. But you know, every year is different. This year, weather-wise, it's just been a nightmare. Of course, a couple of years ago, we had a really bad drought and it was the other way. We didn't have enough rain. And funnily enough, the arable side of the farm at the moment is doing really well because the, the spring crops are all in the ground. The spring barley, uh, fodder beet was supposed to go in today. The other day, the potatoes went in. So, you know, arable-wise, it's doing really well. Um, but the the grass side of the farm with the marshes is where the issue lies and, and that it really is with the weather. Um, so, I mean, I was actually thinking today on another subject with the arable, I was thinking about rolling that barley in some point this week. Thing is, I don't really want a heavy tractor, I want quite a light tractor. And that tractor for me is the classic I've been after, which is a 6410. And every time I ring up about a 6410, sold. Everything's sold at the moment. I've never seen anything like it in my life. And I think it's because a lot of farmers now are clocking that modern tractors are full of electrics, full of electronics, and people don't want want the stuff for the ad blue. And people, farmers, are buying up classics like you wouldn't believe, and you can't buy them, basically. You just In the future, you're not going to be able to buy them. I think it won't be uncommon in the future to not be able to find a 135, not be able to find nice tractors, um, classic ones. You see someone's on their boat here, just filmed them as we were, as we were flying past a bit. That's quite the quite funny you look up see a drone going past you um, but yeah you know classic tractor wise I think the only way to get one is from an auction nowadays classic tractor auction maybe and wait for a, a retirement auction and try and pick it up snap something up that way but you know classic tractor prices at auctions just go through the roof so I'm going to try and get you know a couple more classic John Deere's and then I'm going to call it a day and that'll be that and if they hold the money they hold the money and if they go up in the future which I'm I'm pretty sure if I get the right models, they, they will hold their money and go up in the future. Um, I'll be over the moon. So yeah, these are our marshes on, on the front view now on the left hand side. So we just started to pump them off with the tractor and the a pump I actually rented from Stuart Power. And it started to make a, a difference. Before, this was like a sea. This was literally like completely flooded. You, could, you, do, you couldn't even see any grass. Now, when the grass lies, as anyone knows, any farmers know, when the grass lies on water like this, it's not long for it will die off. And this is what I mean about the damage to the grass. So we had to pump as much off as we could to save the grass. 
So we're fighting against the weather to get down there, you know, try to drive the tractor over there to get it to the pumping station to then start pumping off the water. It was an absolute nightmare. And I just think, you know, we've never had this before down here at these marshes in the 20-odd the years or so we've owned these ones. And, and, and you just think, you know, how extreme are these winters going to become, you know, weather-wise? But you see the 6 hours pumping away here. Uh, it's actually gone now. We've, we've pulled it away from this site. But it was down here for a, a week, couple of weeks doing this job, and it had like a four inch hose on it, like irrigation hose, which was sucking the water out of the dikes, pumping it through the tubes, and then it would go up over the river wall, out onto the reed beds, so it could then dissipate through into the river. That's actually the river, yeah, I believe. And it's, we're in the Waveney Valley now, that's where we're flying over. So the six R's there had it on an Eiffel Williams. That's an IBC behind it, which is full of fuel, which fuels up the portable pump and then it's obviously a uh, diesel engine runs that and then it pumps it over the wall so this was down there for a while and it did work to be fair temporary measure and um, never had to do this before but look you know extreme weather calls for extreme solutions and this is about the only way we could we can get the marshes relatively dry enough to start putting the cattle out now this time last year actually yesterday last year which was the 13th of April we were carting cattle out all day all week and of course now nothing we're gonna to have to wait weeks until this changes and I just think it's a good thing we've made it as much silage as we've made last year with the Fent Baylor because without the silage those cattle would, wouldn't have much food and we'd probably have to look at getting rid of some um, it's been that bad but luckily for the you know the Fent Baylor has really saved us and obviously being able to make more silage so this upcoming year, I've really got to get out with that chrome mower. Mow as much silage as we can mow, as much, make as many bales as we can make. I'd like to make 1,500 silage bales of our own this year if I can. And then about probably five, 600 bales of straw for ourselves. And then there's some neighbors as well who want us to do some silage, some hay and straw as well. So that baler will be pretty busy this year. I'd like to get about three or 4,000 bales for it if I can. And um, you know, I really started to get going with that baler last year. Started to get the hang of it but this year will be a really good test for that baler so yeah you can see it's not great on these marshes it's not a great situation and every year is different you've got to make the best of the situation and we're trying to make the best of it and it, it will come right it's just time it's just the weather um, since this video these have dried up a good bit better than this but it's it's cost the farm a lot of money because it's damaged the grass no end and it's going to be very difficult to uh, to repair this grass now you know it's one of those things on a dry year, these marshes do quite well because they're always quite moist, quite wet to you obviously keep the grass growing, keeps the grass green. Obviously on a wet year, like we've just seen, major problems, huge issues. And, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. There's nothing really I can do other than take the tractor down there with a pump and just try and, try and pump it off. But of course that costs money. You know, and the whole point of the marsh is to feed the cattle is to make some, some beef, produce some beef cattle, some stores, fatten up some animals. You know, we're trying to make some money. Um, so, you know, you can't keep spending out money on the pump, on the tractor, because it's obviously costing an absolute fortune with the diesel. So, you know, it is, It you know, that's farming, isn't it? You know, you try and spend some money to make some money. And it's uh, it goes like that. You know, the, the only other solution I thought about was, was invest in some sort of solar pump, which would run off renewable energy. As we've just seen with this new, there's a, a massive solar park just up the road from the farm here. I think it's on a two and a half thousand acre site, 600 million pounds. It's gonna decimate farms. And uh, luckily a local politician has tried to put an end to it. Um, but you know, solar, I'm a great advocate of solar energy. I just think they need to put it in the right places. Um, places, you know, sort of away from good productive arable farmland. And you know, they're building houses everywhere, of course, you know, decimating the environment whilst um, trying to pay farmers to, to save it, which is, um, ironic at best but look, look it is what it is it's a crazy world we live in i suppose you could say and you know i just i just want these cattle out uh, more than anything it's been a long winter and luckily it's the silage which is keeping us going at the moment but we can't take any more of this rain um, luckily it has stopped a fair bit we need a little bit of rain obviously for the spring barley but nothing like we've seen this winter great winter this one for reservoirs if you've got a reservoir on your farm amazing because you can catch all that rain and then dispense it over the summer months when we of course have a drought so yeah i hope you've enjoyed this video it is a bit doom and gloom but we'll get out there with the cattle before long we're going to be out again 
and that cattle float will be on the trailer. We'll be carting them when it dries up. Um, great Land Rover, this one. Done the Land Rover up. It's in good good condition. It's a great dry day to take it out for a change. Been trying to keep the grit off the, uh, the, the salt grit off it over winter, so I had it in the yard in the barn here. Um, that's the only thing which ruins the, the paintwork on this machine is the uh, salt, well, obviously, when they do it in the winter time. That and mud as well, obviously, you know, you could get some sort of gritty old mud on the farm, but I'll try and keep it in good condition because it's a long term keeper. But yeah, you'll see me just pull the drone in here. It was a really difficult flight, this one. It's really, really windy. I think it's about 40, 50 mile per hour winds, and uh, yeah, we managed to do it. So, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Enjoy your weekend, whatever you're up to. Keep liking and subscribing, all that good stuff. I do enjoy making the content. Let me know if you want to see any other videos, any sort of different content. Leave it in the comments section down below. And uh, yeah, I'll get that stock box on this week and we'll be out carting cattle again. So yeah, catch you on the next one. Click here to subscribe to the channel. And click here to watch another Ollie's Farm video.